Well, today, folks, we're going to be talking about the Nintendo Switch. The Nintendo Switch 2 will be revealed. When I woke up today, I literally had a massive dream about the Nintendo Switch. So today, folks, we're going to be talking about Mario Party Jamboree, which comes out on Thursday because holy crud, the reviews came today. So we have a little bit of information to go over. We're not going to go over everything. I also had to mention how weird these Jamboree reviews are based on what I am seeing inside them. Nintendo did some very weird restricting with what people can talk about or in some cases what they can even play. I don't really understand, but we'll get into that in a bit. But well, here's what we do know. At the time of recording this video, Mario Party Jamboree is the highest reviewed Mario Party game of all time. That's right, higher than any others. It is sitting at an 81 on Metacritic and an 83 on Open Critic. Now, you might go, why is there such a difference between the two? Um, Open Critic doesn't use weighted reviews. Metacritic does use weighted reviews. And that matters a lot when you consider the fact that there's one massive outlier review out there. And it comes from Eurogamer, who gave it a 4 out of 10, a 40 out of 100. And Eurogamer is one of the review outlets that is weighted quite high on Metacritic. So that's one reason why you're seeing that two point review difference, even though the Eurogamer review is also listed on Open Critic. That being said, we're going to dive into the good and the bad, looking at one of the best reviews and then one of the most ugly reviews to see what people are loving about the game and what people are maybe not liking about the game at all. So I'm really excited to go over all this stuff and all the details of Mario Party Jamboree for its launch week this week. I'm so excited. But before I do, I want to remind you all we're on our road to 140,000 subscribers. So if you're enjoying the coverage of Mario Party Jamboree here today, our Switch 2 stuff, Zelda, Mario, Pokemon, whatever, Hey, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, and uh, why don't you drop a like on this video and let me know down below what your favorite flavor of ice cream is. Feels appropriate, because we're playing a game this week that has mini games that involve food. So, favorite ice cream flavor. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get into the good, right? We always want to start with the positive. Usually, you have to do a sandwich, right? You got your good, you got your negative, then you got your good again. We're going to... Just go good to negative and then see where this goes. Uh, first off, the good, a lot of this we're getting from the IGN review because surprisingly, IGN gave the game a 9 out of 10, which makes it the highest rated Mario Party game on the entire IGN website. And here's what they had to say. Uh, they really loved all seven boards and none of them were considered bad. Some of them were just really fantastic. So there are boards that are better than others, but none of them felt bad, and almost all of them felt better than the other two Mario Party entries uh, that came out on Switch. Now, you can totally play a standard game online with friends, which feels like a feature that took way too long to come to the franchise, but it's here, and it's certainly better to have it than not. Uh, there's amazing attention to detail with the characters. Uh, like when you play certain characters, the NPCs in the game will have different lines of dialogue for the given characters. So if you're like, uh, you know, Bowser Jr. or something, and you come upon a Koopa Troopa that's an NPC on the map that talks to you, it will talk to you like, hey, you know, majesty, you know, hey, king, etc. So like stuff that it wouldn't say to that. Same with if you're a King Boo and you come upon like a boo on a map. So kind of cool that they have that much attention to detail. Uh, they really love the mini games where there's apparently 110 of them. And there is a single player campaign. Uh, they couldn't talk about it other than just some generalizations that it's fun and engaging, uh, whatever that means. That's going to get to a point we're going to get to later. But now we got to get into like the criticisms of the game because, of course, you, know, you can't just have the good. You got to have the bad. So we're going to go to Eurogamer. And, man, uh, this Eurogamer review is very weird. So Eurogamer complains that it takes too long to get into the action or the mini games due to cutscenes and menu screens to skip through. Eurogamer feels that the AI always wins or cheats. It is 100% at all rhythm games and always gets the star in underhanded ways. It also claims that there are at times no strategy in this game, or basically there is no strategy in this game at all. Eurogamer also notes that they hate that you have to unlock the three additional boards, primarily by playing the single player campaign. Eurogamer also makes a comment about a mode in the game being shat out of the Nintendo Land trash compactor, which is about all I really needed to know when it came to taking the review seriously. 
Uh, yeah, the Eurogamer review starts off in very negative intonations. You can very clearly tell this is someone that just does not like Mario Party at all and just doesn't get it. And I'm gonna, I'm just gonna say something. While Mario Party is good fun and anyone can win, there's definitely strategy to the game. It's like saying there's no strategy in Monopoly. It's like saying there's no strategy in other board games that have random dice rolls. Yes, there is luck involved. That's part of board games. Like, board games involve a little luck, but there is still some strategy. Uh, it's funny, too, because, like, this person hates the bonus stars, so they kept turning them off because you can, but then complains how, like, hey... The AI is always, you know, winning this and, and getting a star or getting this. Meanwhile, uh, later in the review, she talks about how she was always winning the four-player minigames at the end, always winning in the minigames, always, 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 only losing the rhythm ones, and there's bonus stars for winning your minigame. So maybe you wouldn't get last place if you turned on the bonus stars that have been there in Mario Party like this whole time, and then you would have got rewarded for your skill in the minigames because they note... Uh, in their review, this is one thing we know this from Mario Party forever that there's no reward for winning these mini games, just some coins. But there is. Turn on the bonus stars! Like, seriously, if you turn, uh, maybe I'm alone in this, but if you're someone who turns off the bonus stars, to me, you're not playing Mario Party in the way it's meant to be played. The whole point of the mini games and all stuff, yeah, it's the coins, and if you're tight on coins, it can make a difference, but some people are never tight on coins, and you always have a lot. But here's the thing. Turn on the bonus stars! You can, like, win bonus stars at times for, like, winning the most four-player mini games, winning the most showdowns. You can get bonus stars that can hand you the victory in the end for showing your skill if you happen to have the unlucky rolls of the dice but you keep dominating the mini games you could end up coming ahead in the end that is the beauty of this game so when someone's out there telling me how you know the, the game has no skill and there's like no strategy involved man and, and, and the euro game review also goes on to complain over and over and over and over again about the motion control mini games the funny thing is, it's optional and you can turn it off. Don't even know it's a menu setting. Other reviews brought it up. There's a menu setting. You can just turn off the motion controls if you don't like it, and then you don't have to use motion controls in any of the mini games. And no, it doesn't get rid of the motion control mini games. It gives you alternative ways to play the mini games without motion controls. Uh, I'm just, my mind is flabbergasted right now at the negativity of this review. Why this person was set to review the game, I don't know. But here's what I will say in general. There is some critiques I have of Nintendo. So in reading all the reviews, Nintendo really restricted the reviewers. They couldn't play or talk. One, they couldn't play online at all. So the only online experience we get in these reviews come from play sessions they did with Nintendo. That sucks. That's not the way to handle a game. Like, I'm going to be honest. While the game is reviewed very well, it also feels like the game that has the least amount of the game actually reviewed. Uh, you can't talk about the single player campaign at all. Uh, you can't talk about, you can talk about, you know, some of it, like how the maps are unlocked, but you can't actually talk about what happens in the single player campaign. You can't talk about, uh, anything with online because online was just not enabled the entire time they had review copies of the game. So only thing you talk about are your play sessions with Nintendo, which is not indicative of a final uh, game, you know, at your home. So, you know, is Nintendo hiding something there? And you, they couldn't talk about like the 20 player modes or anything else. Like everything was very much... You can only talk about co-op multiplayer matches, which, by the way, is the Brux and the main point. And yes, you can play online in that mode, but then you can't do it anyways with the review copies. Really feels like they, these people were gimped. Like they were severely gimped in what they're able to talk about in the reviews. And that is unfortunate. It is cool because, you know, a lot of stuff gets saved. Like the single player campaign isn't spoiled, but... Then it is because the whole game's leaked online anyways. It's been online for like five, six, seven days at this point. Uh, there's people that I've seen on my own Discord server that I know are playing it on their Steam decks and stuff. So this game's been out there for a while. I just, I just sit back and look at it as I don't really know why Nintendo's so restrictive with the reviews. I understand if you want to tell them not to talk about certain story points in the campaign or certain unlockables in the campaign or how you unlock all the mini games. Like, I can understand keeping some of that a secret so we could discover it as we play. But for a full review, I, you should let them play online, at least with each other. 
Like, it's very weird they couldn't play online to test any of the online modes since online plays such a big role in Mario Party Jamboree. That being said, uh, look, everything in this game sounds fantastic. We're going to end up hopefully playing it on launch here on Thursday with all of you. I'm saying hopefully because I don't have the game ordered yet. i got to sort some of the details out for that, but... I'm personally very excited for where uh, the Mario Party franchise is going. I'm very excited for the future of everything. And I can't wait to hop in and get partying with all of you, hopefully later this week, if not later this week, ASAP, maybe next week, etc. Again, I'm hoping to do a launch stream for it, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. Maybe I'll reach out to Nintendo as well. Sometimes they'll send me a copy the day of, just, just for shits and giggles. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for being here. Hopefully you enjoyed this Mario Party Jamboree review summary. <sighs> can't wait, guys. I'll catch you in the next video.